you want to achieve financial independence? Do you want to retire early? If your answer is yes, then this video is for you. Achieving financial independence and early retirement starts with being smart with your money. There are actually five things that most people spend way too much money on, and that's what we'll be talking about in this video. Every dollar counts, and every dollar you save is a dollar earned from your hard work and time. So you really need to emphasize the value of every dollar. So keep watching and stick around until the end for more tips on being smart with money. Welcome to Savvy, where we have lots of practical wisdom to share. Hey, don't forget to hit the like button below, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more advice here on Savvy. Today, I'll share with you how you can retire in 5 years by not buying these 5 things. First, Household Expenses You could become house poor if you don't live within your means. What is house poor, you ask? It's when you pay too much for your house and don't have enough capacity to pay for your other bills and to save. Home investment is risky. Let me remind you that diversifying your investments is always a good idea and not just on real estate. Why is this the case? This is because a lot of your net worth, maybe not a lot, but it could be the majority of your net worth will be tied to your real estate investments. This would result in you not having enough liquidity for you to be able to retire early. A study was done on how much space is wasted in American homes. The study results showed that a ton of space is wasted on these big American homes. The dining rooms could barely be used, the piano was used from time to time, and the big lot for the garden barely set foot on. You get the point. So now, what's the practical solution for this? Well, first off, if you are a homeowner, then it's good to try negotiating when your lease is up for renewal. You could get a better rate if you get a two-year lease. Or you could also try getting a roommate if you live alone or have the extra space, and if it's something you're open to. By the way, the best months to look for a property are from November to February because you have the least amount of competition. Second, stop eating out. Personally, this is what I struggled with the most. This was even more difficult for me to overcome because I'm always out and about. Of course, when you're out the whole day, you would obviously have to eat at some point. So I'd always find myself eating out. Aside from the fact that I absolutely love food and trying out new restaurants. But I did also realize that this was one of my biggest expenses. Breakfast should be the most inexpensive meal of the day. But when you eat breakfast out, the price of eggs and bacon suddenly triple the price. Going out to brunch and drinking a bottomless mimosa with an overpriced salad isn't the way to go either. The obvious solution to this is to cook your meals at home. This will help you save up a lot more and force you to learn how to cook if you don't know how to. Which is, by the way, an important life skill. Trust me, this was a struggle at first because I didn't want to bring packed lunch to work every day. But eventually, I got used to it. So plan your more budget-friendly meals. Don't go to the grocery store without a list. And if you do have a list, you better stick to it. I'm not telling you that you should never eat out. Just limit and balance it out. As long as you know your limits and continue to live within your means. Third, streaming services. At the peak of the pandemic, Guess what I was doing? You would not find me outside, that's for sure. While other people were working out in their homes, meditating and all that, I was either on my bed or my couch with my tablet or laptop stuck to my lap. I watched so many series and movies that I have no idea exactly how many series I've watched. There are dozens of streaming services out there. Half of them I probably don't even know about. You've got to admit that this is a part of your big expenses. You think it's not a big deal because 
the price of it may not be too much for you but the accumulation of the fees makes it a big expense i've been a subscriber to netflix and spotify for years now instead of paying for multiple streaming services you could just pick one or two there are also many less known streaming services that offer lower rates that you could search more on there are also lots of packages and promos being offered by these streaming services like netflix for example they have a family plan which could help you guys save more so you could split the bill well by the way this isn't sponsored what streaming services are you subscribed to please share it with us in the comments below hey if you're still here please keep watching because i have two more tips you will want to hear fourth lottery tickets you can buy a lottery ticket or two i know many people who spend an unnecessary amount on lottery tickets which isn't actually practical because the lottery or any form of gambling is not supposed to be something you count on to solve your financial problems i'm not being a pessimistic person i'm just being realistic and the odds of you winning the lottery are pretty low gambling in general is not something you should practice i'm not saying to get rid of it entirely but limit yourself and don't depend on it fifth new cars a car loses its value you will see here on the graph that the moment you drive a new car it loses 10 percent of its value once you've used the car for five years 60 percent of the car's value is lost if the car has been used for 10 to 12 years the value of the car has already significantly depreciated so if you buy a car that has been used for 10 to 12 years then you get a better price on it because you let someone else take the hit on depreciation you don't need a new car that's for sure a used car in good condition could still get you from point a to point b kind of like a phone this is also one additional tip i can give you phones now are pretty pricey who are we kidding they aren't pretty pricey they really are expensive you can use your phone for years as long as you take care of it you don't need a new phone every year it doesn't matter if they release a new model because as long as your phone works then that should be good enough a working phone is a good one and if it ain't broken don't buy a new one that's enough practical wisdom for today don't forget to give us a thumbs up below we will be posting four to five videos per week so click the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of our new videos weekly thanks for tuning in see you in the next video